Hey guys, Aaron Farmer here with My Sugar Free Journey. And here are the notes for day five of the 28 day uh, ketogenic weight loss challenge. So today what we're gonna cover is why eating less and exercising more doesn't work. Um, so the reason the old, uh, you can call it calories in, calories out, or eat less, move more, you know, either there's a couple different names for those models of weight loss. Uh, the reason why they don't work is they're based on a very flawed view of body fat. The popular view of body fat says that all calories are created equal and that uh, if you want to lose weight, all you need to do is just eat fewer calories than you use and presto changeo, magic weight loss happens. The truth is a little bit more complicated than that and it's a little trickier than that as well. What we now know is that eating less and exercising more works great uh, for a while. Uh, you don't need to look any farther for proof of this than the hit show The Biggest Loser. Those trainers put these poor people through an extreme exercise program while cutting their calories down to almost nothing and it works. These people lose a ton of weight until the camera is cut off. And then slowly but surely all the weight comes back on and the contestants end up fatter than when they began. There was a uh, huge article about this here not too long ago, you know, uh, going back to these Biggest Loser contestants. And to a man or a woman, they almost all said that that show broke their metabolism and it, uh, it caused long-term damage to their body. Uh, have you ever wondered why you've never seen a reunion show? Uh, no, you know, that nobody that was on the show five years ago has ever come back on the show, and, uh, or at least very few of them, um, to, to show how they've been, managed to keep the weight off uh, for multiple years. And the reason why is because that method of of uh, weight loss just doesn't work full time. So to try to explain it, <clears throat> what's going on here, I'm, I'm going to use an analogy. So let's let's say that you're in charge of a coal electric plant, okay? So you're in charge of this coal electric plant, you make all the electricity for this little town down the river, and in order to meet the, uh, ele the electrical needs for this town, you have to burn 2,000 pounds of coal per day to make the electricity that this town needs. You have a little coal in reserve, but uh, you know, you get a shipment of 2,000 pounds of coal every day, and that's what you burn uh, to make the electricity for this little town. <clears throat> um, so you, like I said, you have a little coal in reserve to cover any shortfalls, but mostly you just burn what comes in. Then, all of a sudden, your daily shipments get, put, get cut back to 1,500 pounds a day. Well, what do you do? Well, you might pull from your reserves for a few days to see if things go back to normal, but after a few days, if you're a smart plant manager, you're going to cut your output down to 1,500 uh, pounds of, of coal being burned a day and just try to make do with what you have coming in. But at the same time, you're going to be on the phone screaming at your suppliers to get back on the regular shipments amount, uh, shipment amount so that you can uh, get back to the levels that you were on. In fact, if you're a really good manager, you're going to call for more than the, your, your 2,000 pounds, your 2,000 pounds of coal per day, so that you can use the extras to bump up your reserves and to make sure that you are prepared for the next time your shipments are interrupted. Your body is essentially this coal plant. Once you cut back your caloric intake, intake, your body will try to go along as normal. It will pull fat from your and glucose from your reserves for energy, and you'll begin to lose a little weight. Uh, this is why the first week or so on a new diet, you see some really impressive results. This is also why here in the first week or two of January, you're going to see a lot of people on your Facebook feed talk about all the weight they've lost on the new diet. That's perfectly normal. Almost any diet can help you lose weight for the first month. Um, but then your body starts to realize that you aren't feeding it enough. You're not, you're not giving it the energy that it's used to. Uh, and it begins to take steps to preserve those reserves by cutting down your energy output. So what happens is, is once you, you know, if you've cut your, your caloric intake down by, say, 500 calories a day, uh, your body begins to use 500 calories a day less in energy. It will, number one, it'll make you start feeling more lethargic. You're going to have lower energy levels uh, because the body will reduce the amount of energy available for movement. Uh, you'll also begin to feel more muddle-headed as the body reduces the amount of energy for cognition, and you'll begin to feel colder as the body reduces the amount of energy available for warmth, especially in your extremities. Um, this is why the effects of a new diet uh, that rely on caloric restriction begins, begin to taper off after a while and then plateau, and you sit forever at the same weight. Uh, it's because your body is trying to balance the energy coming in with the energy going out. Uh, but as soon as you uh, start listening to that screaming voice in your head, because the other thing that happens is the hormones in your body that want you to eat 
get kicked into overdrive because your body's screaming at you, hey, you're not giving us the energy that we need to do the things that we want to do, so you need to eat more food. This is why when you have a caloric restricted diet, you begin to obsess about food and you begin to, you know, you do nothing but look forward to your next meal because you're always so hungry. That's a hormonal thing. It's not a willpower thing. Um, if you uh, can fix your hormones, you will not have that issue. Uh, but as soon as you start listening to that screaming voice in your head telling you that you're hungry and need more food, not only do you quickly gain all the weight back, but you usually gain a few more pounds as well uh, as the body tries to protect itself from the next time you try to starve it. This is what we call yo-yo dieting. So if you've ever done that, been on a diet, lost 20 pounds, felt great, and then over the next three or four months, you gain those 20 pounds back plus another five, that's, that's what's supposed to happen. That's, that's how your body is supposed to react to a calorically restricted diet. Um, so when that happens, don't despair. Your body's actually working like it's supposed to. And now let's go the other way. Your coal, the coal plant is used to operating at 2,000 pounds a day of coal to meet demand, but for whatever reason, the demand has now increased to 2,500 pounds a day. What does the plant manager do? He pulls from his reserves for a little while to cover the overage, but he also gets on the phone to the suppliers and tells them to increase his daily shipments to do the 2,500 pounds of coal per day in order to meet demand. Your body's no different. Uh, when you increase your physical activity by, uh, by starting an exercise program, you know, it's the first of the year, you're going to go work out, and you start you know, burning more calories because you're out exercising, the, your body responds by making you hungrier. Um, you will generally eat more food to cover the caloric imbalance, keeping your weight roughly the same. Uh, exercise is a terrible way to lose weight. It's an incredibly inefficient way to lose weight. Um, so we want to, uh, uh, we want to, uh, exercise is a good thing, I want to say that, but we want to uh, match that exercise program up with a uh, method of eating that will actually allow your body to start losing weight, and spoiler alert, that's the ketogenic diet. So if you can't eat, if you can't lose weight by eating less, and you can't lose weight by moving more, then what else is there? Uh, and actually tomorrow we'll look at a different way to think about weight loss. And I think once you join us tomorrow and you understand what we're going to call the two compartment method of weight loss, uh, you, you'll have a much better understanding of what's going on in your body and why your the old ways of eating, um, uh, the old ways of dieting never seem to work for you. Uh, and I think you're going to find that very interesting. So I appreciate you guys watching. This has been day five of the 28 day sugar free weight loss challenge. Uh, you can join us uh, in the Facebook group at mysugarfreejourney.com slash 28 day, 28 day. Uh, and if you uh, click the link uh, in the information section below the video, it'll take you over the blog post with the links to everything else that you need. Appreciate you guys watching and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.